Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to do Kotev, it's part four. Not to worry if you've not been here for the past couple of uh, shirim, that's okay. Um, what I would like to do today is I want to analyze a certain dimension of the malacha of Kotev. And it's actually, I think, going to give us, first of all, an insights into a number of different halachic concepts just that exist in general, not necessarily Kotev related. It will deal with Eretz Yisrael. And I'll deal with a couple of other um, side notes as well. It's just actually a fascinating topic. But let's, uh, let's begin. Let's see our first. This is a, a Gemara in source number one. Hakonesa de Besurya. Someone who acquires land in... In Syria, out in Mesopotamia somewhere. Kekona before Yerushalayim. This is someone is acquiring something of the outskirts uh, somewhere of Jerusalem. Like what's the, like, what's the, like, what does it do with anything? Amar Shesha, here we go, Lamar. Shekosvin alav ono va'afilu v'shabbos. You're allowed to complete some type of document, even on Shabbos. What? So this is very near and dear to me. We just sold our house this week, for Hashem. So we're, I, I, I totally get the, uh, the whole idea of selling and buying. It's like very nerve-wracking, so I'd like to sell your house on Shabbos. Like you can sign this contract. You can coast You can write a contract on Shabbos. It's crazy. Shabbos. The Shabbos What are you talking about? A mamash on Shabbos? Well, Tadema Rava. Clarification. Omer the over kochavi vosa. You can tell an Eno Yehudi. You can tell Chris. Chris, sign this document. Vosa, write this document. Draft this document. Even though what? Meaning, let's go through. This, let's break down these various components to it. Writing on Shabbos, let's just say black and white writing on Shabbos is what a deraisa de rabbanu. Deraisa, I mean a Torah. I can't write on Shabbos. Now, telling a non-Jew something. What, what's that concept called? Amira Lenochri. Many years ago, four or five years ago, we spent almost an entire semester before your time, even our children's time, right? Going through all issues of Amira Lenochri, right? In various situations, asking non Jews to do things for you on Shabbos. And what do you violate when you ask a non Jew to do? <coughs> now, ask a non Jew to do a Malacha do right concept of Amir Lenachri. Is that a Doraita concept? Or is that a Durabana concept? Having a non-Jew do Malacha for you. Is that Amir Torah? Well, the rabbi said, don't have Chris do Malacha for you. Would you say? Is Doraita Durabana? What does it say in the Gemara? Fafa gav the Amir Lenachri of the Shavut. When you see the word Shavut, what does that always mean? Does that mean Doraita Durabana? Durabana. So asking Chris do Malacha is Durabana. Wait a second. You're allowed to ask? non-Jew to do Malachar for you, you're violating a rabbinic prohibition. Called the Mural and Achri. Says the Gemara, Mishum Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael O Gazu Rabbanan. Because of the great Heliga Mitzvah of Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael, the rabbis did not enact a decree. I want to explain what's going on here. Explain. Explain. Um, even Amir, Amir Lenochri. So the rabbis created a zero called Lenochri. Why? Why would the rabbis do that? Why did the rabbis create something called Amir Lenochri? What might be the rationale? It's a gzera, shema, that you don't do yourself. Okay, or what else might it be? I don't say shema, you might do it yourself. What would your Shabbos look like if you'd stand in your office and next to you is Chris and you tell, okay, do this, buy, sell, write, da 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 da. <laughs> so your Shabbos is gone, right? Okay. Or maybe, some people argue, I don't want to get into this in too much detail, we did this a number of years ago, maybe if you're appointing an Anjib, you're shaliach, there's a problem with shalichu, right? And really, Nachi probably has two issues with it. Maybe an Anjib is your shaliach, questions, could an Anjib be a shaliach? Okay, that's not for now. And the other potential issue would be, not just a dino of but maybe you're talking. It's maybe a problem with Dabar Dabar. You're talking, what are you talking? You're saying, do malacha. Write for me. Write for me. Email for me. All those things could be a violation of 
You're not allowed to speak. Ah, you're not allowed to speak. Your dibur of Shabbos has to be different than your dibur and chol. You aware of that? Very important. People who were very lax, sometimes were very lax two days ago. I myself sometimes I'm guilty. You can't talk about shulch. You can't talk about the great business deals, the stock market. How today Twitter made the IP, is making an IPO. The market's going crazy. Twittering about Twitter's IPO, right? How the European Central Bank is lowering their lending rate by a quarter percent. I sat in the car for way too long today because of traffic. So I think you heard the same <laughs> news reports, right? So, to, to say such things on a Thursday morning is one thing, but on Shabbos, Kodesh, what do you mean? Your speech has to be different. So, I'm really not we could also be an issue of Tabar Davar or an issue of Shlichas. Oh, there's other, that's the, okay. The rabbis said. So the rabbis made this gzera. The rabbis have ability to forego the gzera. That is, they made the gzera. Classic example. If you're a little bit sick, certain things the rabbis are a little bit sick. Well, wave. You're allowed to do these various medicinal things because if you're sick, the makom choli lo goes a rabbi. They make you sick. The rabbis would never make a gzera to make you. It's going to unfortunately yeah. if you're sick. Same idea. Yes, the karma, yes, the karma. Right, okay. No, so careful. If they're Yeshba Sakana, I don't need the rabbis to withdraw. Hashem already says Yeshba Sakana, you can already violate certain things. But the, certain the rabbanans would be waived because of holy, because of if it's a great pain or difficulty. Sometimes the rabbis were, when they created their system, part of their system of creating it was certain scenarios, they drop their demands. Makam holy, makam sakana, makam. And that's why uh, sometimes on, on, uh, on Arab Shabbos, there's a few leniencies. Comes to kashras, certain guests, if you're having the right to guests, not like your neighbors, if you're having like people, certain real guests, halachic guests, from out of town, people who aren't necessarily uh, Shomer Shabbos, who wouldn't have Shabbos, those types of guests, there are certain cases, you'd be more lenient. In laws of kashru, Hestem Rupe, or because of Nasser Orchim, the rabbis wouldn't make their gzera. So they relax their gzera, they relax a couple of the rabbis, so you'd be allowed to get away with certain things. It's not for exactly when they are, but the concept exists in halacha, so it's important to realize that. So, here's my question for you. This Gemara seems to say, at face value, that because of the mitzvah of Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael, the rabbis forgo what? I'm really not. Now, could you extrapolate this to other things as well? Or is this a localized halacha? What is your gut reaction to you? Meaning, can I extrapolate this for other mitzvah Yeshua Veres Yisrael? When it comes to any mitzvah Yeshua Veres Yisrael, any Durabanan, forgo, is forgone. What's the issue when it comes to real estate? About to purchase land, it's Friday afternoon. You're about to make a deal. Sun is beginning to set. The deal's not happening yet. You need another six hours. You need another twelve hours. You need another eighteen hours. It's going to be Shabbos. Because there's this law that's certain that will keep your size to the business. To the la- okay, okay. So, so what? Therefore, what? It, so again, you want to say that this is a global thing that all the rabbinians are waived for the midst of the right? What's specific about this case? About this a contract? The Ramban says in many places that Israel is the right. Okay, but so I mean, uh, so do we extrapolate even further and say for all fulfillment of mitzvah the right does, you could violate the Rabbanans? Doesn't appear that way. No, that's absurd, right? It says because of Eretz Israel. So because of Chiv can violate the Rabbanan? Because you will lose it. What? Oh. It must be. Here's a land deal. Guys, there's a whole bidding war. There's, Abdullah wants the land. Right? Christina wants the land. And Moshe wants the land. So you need someone to finish the contract. Right? Who's going to sign? So if you don't do it, the land might be given to an inner Yudi. You might lose the deal. Potentially. Right? I mean, is this referring to a case where this people there's bid it is a bidding war? Who's gonna buy it, who's gonna get it, who's gonna get it? I wanna make sure I get it. I can't sign, I can't seal the deal. So I'd be allowed to, because of Mitzvah Yeshua Yisra, to ask Roberto to sign for me. Finish the contract for me. Only because I will lose the land. 
Or is this in other, whatever other areas of Mitzvah Yisrael are, whatever they might be, is this an expansive, is this limited? Yeah. Would you be able to start or is only finish? Meaning to start on a Friday afternoon, the whole, the whole episode. Yeah, the whole thing. Oh, yeah, so again, this Gemara seems to imply, yeah, you can. Or even to start on Shabbos. The question is, do we do these things, right? Or to only in Mecca, Flash, it went in. Yeah, so I don't know exactly, and um, what exactly when it says in the Gemara, "Kotfin alav ono," like that is to seal the deal, right? So if I, if I could close the deal, if I need to close the deal on Shabbos, right? Last weekend, you know, last, last Friday afternoon, we're negotiating with these people, and they, they were from our Shabbos Jews, wonderful people. They live, they live in Montreal. So here's the Shabbos in Montreal. It's half hour earlier. So I had an extra half hour. <laughs> I said to them, we are going to reach a deal before Shabbos. But they had much more pressure than I did. <laughs> Their Shabbos was in 25 minutes. I had almost an hour. Right? And I said, we're not, we can't go to Shabbos not knowing. Let's just come to a conclusion right now. And then the actual contract we'll do with the lawyers on Sunday and on Monday. Right? Look at this past week. But let's come to some maskana and oral agreement over the phone. Right? There's an advantage to that. Right, so let's say it would have been over Eretz. It was a it was a Thornhill property. Thornhill's chashuv, not as chashuv as Eretz Yisrael. Right, people have to realize that. Um, but to seal the deal, to sign on the contract, someone else could come in and swoop it up. So that appears that's the issue here. Take a, yeah. How far into Shabbos does this go? Is this Benish Mazel? No, the, this is uh, Benish Mazel. Even the Amshin of would hold that it's already Shabbos. Uh, into Shabbos. Okay, look at source two. Look at. Um, Oh, I want to actually explain to you another concept, which is very important. There's another head there that you should know about. There's a tshuva that postulates the following. Can you ask non-Jews to play music on Shabbos for you at Shabbat Bracha? What purpose? Simcha, chastam v'kala. So asking an Anjud to do malacha is a shvut. Playing musical instruments is a shvut. There's a klal that says, shvut to shvut, the malacha mitzvah, you're allowed to do. In the Rabbanan. What? Two negatives make a positive. Not two negatives, two Rabbanans. So again, playing musical instrument on Shabbos is the Rabbanan. Telling a non Jew to do it is a Rabbanon. A Shvut de Shvut of a Durabanon of a Durabanon, Bimako Mitzvah, is permissible. And it appears, it appears, that's a Lechatchila Din. Right? We don't do it, but, uh, you know, I don't know, it, somehow I think it's the Shibrach and Shabbos, and all of a sudden you have the non Jewish orchestra playing, people are going to like freak out a little bit. Right? But, well, here's the question. Would this be an example of a Durabanan, non Jew, doing a Durabanan, the Malka Mitzvah? What's your gut reaction? Yes or no? Is this a Shvut to Shvut the Malka Mitzvah? What's the person doing here? Is he doing Ketiva? Is he Ketiva what? Doraita. I just want you to be aware of these issues that are about to come up now. Okay, so again, is this specifically a Eretz Israel issue? And by the way, this could be a Bichirish, because now I'm telling a non-Jew, Durbanan, to do a Doraita, but because of the mitzvah of Yeshuv Eretz Israel, it's a joker. Meaning, this does not fall under the general rubric of halachic scenarios. This is a steroid example. It, 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 because it's Right? It, it, it rises above the general halachic parameters because of mitzvah Yeshua Eretz Yisrael. And it wouldn't, the Chora, at face value, this is not your typical shvut to shvut b'malka mitzvah. Shvut to shvut b'malka mitzvah could be matot l'chachila. So I want you to throw that out there because I don't know if people are aware of that. All right. So, is Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael greater, in which case it overrides even a Shavut on a Doraita? So take a look at this. 
Look at source two. Mutter lutin abide bears Israel, mean eno Yehudi be Shabbat, the chotem umale barchaut. And you could sign and you could seal in the archaut with the non Jewish type of governance, right? So the local magistrate could sign. This, don't forget, this is talking about a time where it wasn't. Israel was not in Jewish hands, it wasn't Jewish sovereignty. Local mag- magistrate, local government, the municipalities would want to seal the deal. They could seal the deal on Shabbos, it's not a problem. Comes on the Ramah, and he says the following Shalahem, Bichtav Shalahem. Meaning, when the non Jewish government sign has to be in Tav Shalahem, in their um, writing, in their language. It is only violating a rabbinic prohibition writing in their language. It appears that writing in English is only an issue. What's what? Writing in English only says Rabbanan? What's going on here? Right? Isn't that what the Ramah seems to say? So again, the Ramah seems to say, who seems to imply that the only reason why you're, why you're allowed to start the deal is a classic shvut de shvut of Malcolm Mitzvah. Non, Telling the non-Jews the Rabbanan. Writing is a Rabbanan. Malcolm Mitzvah. Eretz Yisrael. Writing in English, or writing in whatever language they wrote in 500 years ago, Actually, it could have been English. It was governing over Palestine at the time. Uh, that's pretty wild. You wanted a lift, didn't you? Did you got my message? Uh, yeah, I got it. <laughs> okay, so that is a pretty wild thing. Welcome. We're just going to catch you up very quickly in 30 seconds. The Gemara in source number one says that you're allowed to tell a non-Jew to sign a deed, a contract for you to get land in Israel. And what's the reason Why? You're allowed to ask a non-Jew to acquire land for you, so it's because of the great mitzvah of Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael. Now, it doesn't say because it's a Yeshuv Yeshuv Baka Mitzvah. You're moving to Israel. It's very important for you. Could you sign your a land deal? Okay, now it's to be more problematic. And now non-Jews are, would be in the office. In those days, when Israel's under non-Jewish dominion, non-Jewish governance, <coughs> the non-Jews would, be, would have to, I guess, sign the document they've acquired this land, and they'd be allowed to do so on, on Shabbos. Says the... Rama, they're allowed to sign in their writing, in their language. Why? Because writing in their language, in the vernacular, is only a rabbinic prohibition. And because of the mitzvah of Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael, Shvut Yeshvut, Pemaka Mitzvah, the rabbi said, go ahead and do it. Shvut Yeshvut, Amirul and Ochri said the rabbi, Shvut, writing in vernacular, Shvut, Pemaka Mitzvah, Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael. And we're like, wait, are you English? The Rabbanan, very strange. Right? That would lead to a tremendous amount of leniencies living in Toronto. Okay? There's only a day of the Rabbanan, right? Doctors would have a much easier time on Shabbos. Right? the Rabbanan. You're saving a person. A lot of. <laughs> very helpful for writing in English and going to the Rabbanan. Many different things. Okay, Pilu Mishabura, source three. Dean Wasser. Rasir Lamar. Haktiva Zohi Midurabanan. Writing is Rabanan. Fahabi Shvut is Shvut. All you know, Yehudi. Right? So he's summarizing what I just said, right? Again, it's a rabbinic, it's only a Shvut is Shvut. All you day, a Yehudi. Mishum Hachi, He Tiru, Mishum Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael. Hence, I think so new so far. Fahayin Bebir Halacha. Now you understand why I brought you this Bir Halacha, which is ginormous. The ginormous beer halacha should be Arnu. Did that or Zerua, the opinion of the or Zerua, yes, I told you it was long. Dat Yechidahi. Remember, remember the Ramah? This is, this is a, this is what's <coughs> great about this is it really teaches you the halachic process. Remember how the Ramah quotes the or Zerua? Oh, that's that Al Zayn there at the end. So Ramah is basing on the or Zerua. And the, by the way, who's the beer halacha? Who wrote the beer halacha? Uh, uh, right, so he would have come down himself. <laughs> it's very useful, right? So, so this is the Mishabura. The Mishabura is saying that I just want you guys to know 
that is explained to me halacha that the Orzarua is flying solo. He's a soloist. He's on his own to hold that writing in English and the vernacular is the Rabbanon. There's no source in the Gemara. And all the Boskim argue. Everyone under the sun argue with this opinion that writing the vernacular is the Rabbanon. The sphere lay the Av Bechtav Shalahemu Isser Midoraita. And that writing in their language, in the vernacular, is a biblical prohibition. Ubachol Lashon Chayav in any language you follow. And he says, it's a Mishnah. What, what you, this is not even a, it's not a Chakira on the Briska Rav. This is like a, a Mishnah that you learn with your children. And it says, Yidu Bashabis, Vafilu Hachi, He Tiru Bakan, right? The Shabbos Kuv Gimel. Vafilu Hachi, ah. So what's the Chiddush of our Gemara? Vafilu Hachi, Tiru Bakan, all you day in Uri. How do we allow Chris or Muhammad to sign and to seal the deal? Mishum Yeshuv Eretz Yisrael. What's the Chiddush of the Gemara? The Chiddush of the Gemara is that you can ask a non-Jew to do a Doraisa for you because of Eretz Yisrael. Because if it's just a Durabanan, what's the Chiddush? It's Shudosh Magam Mitzvah. The Chiddush of this Gemara is that the Durabanan of Amira la Nochri is waived because of Yeshua Eretz Yisrael. The Af, let's just finish this off and we'll talk for a second. Af, Machaber, Pasuk, the common Vesim, and Shin Zayin, and Sif, Hei, De Malacha, Do Oraita, Asur, Al Yidin, and Yehudi. There was a principle that says you're not allowed to ask a non Jew to violate a biblical prohibition. You can't ask Christians to do Doraisa for you. No way. Asil, the Surah Mitzvah, even for Mitzvah, you're not allowed to. Zadifa. No. This is still preferred. For the fees that Asr Lamar, the Yehudi, the Shabbos, the Mikhtav, Afil, the Tzorch Mitzvah. You can't ask Chris. Do me a favor, Chris. Can you write a letter for me? Muhammad, can you write a letter for me, please? For a mitzvah. Write a letter to, uh, for Tzedaka. Write a letter for Achnasar or whatever letter you're allowed to do. No way! Tzorch Mitzvah. Im lo shehu gamken Tzorch Gadol. Unless there's a great need, right? Perhaps you can ask a non-Jew to write a letter if you're related to the government in order to plead to save a community, right? Who's near death. That might be allowed to do. The Yishla Hakkel, okay, fine. There's maybe room for Tzorah Gadol. Very complicated in Halacha. But essentially, what is the mission we're trying to argue? Do not tell me for one second if this is a classic example of a Shvut to Shvut B'makom Mitzvah. The Ramak quotes in Orzarua. We don't pass on this order of This is a da'yachi. The reason why you're allowed to do it, even though it's a do'oraita, and it's a tzorah gadol, the chiddush might be that maybe this is a tzorah gadol of mitzvah yishev eretz yisrael. Okay, that might be what it's trying to say. But it doesn't matter how you explain it. Essentially, getting, acquiring land, owning land in eretz yisrael is a mitzvah yishev eretz yisrael, and you'll be allowed to violate a Amira Lenach, we on a door right now. It's generally, you're not allowed to do it. Look at that. Okay? So we had a Havamina to think that writing in English and writing the vernacular is the Rabbana, in which case this would just be a case of a Shvut to Shvut Malcolm Metzvah, comes along the Mishra and says, no way. Look, it's very difficult to the Ruah. How? This is an Orza Ruah. Orza Ruah is a serious Risha. Right? Orza Ruah. How do you get to It's a Ramah. Ramah. It's very strange that Ramah quotes minority opinion, right? Well, that usually doesn't happen. Right? So, okay, we'll get there in a second. All right, so far we're good? We're good? It's a cool case. Okay. Um, Let's go down to the Bir Halacha source form. Let's see how far we can get, but this is a fun Bir Halacha. Bichtav Shalem source. For I am Mishnah, Bura of Nisha, Din Zehu, Nafka, Mila, Kamadvar, Mamar, to the Bir Halacha. Because there's so many ramifications, I gotta deal with this issue, says the Bir Halacha. And that's why he writes this massive Bir Halacha. Hine, Haramah, Hetik, Beshem, or Zeru, Dichtiva, Cheren, Chutz, Lektava, Shuri, Hurak, Midrabanan, that writing in English. What, what is the point of the Lektava Shuri? Hebrew. Writing in any language except for Hebrew is a 
Your money. So, so what about in like the Bayit Rishon where they wrote in the in other other stuff? Um, Ivri? Okay. Or whatever. Ivri. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Good question. <laughs> it could be that whatever the language of Hebrew is at that time is the Zoraita. So maybe when they had Tavivri, that was the Zoraita. Because Zoraita is the Zoraita. Good so question. Which, so which font is it? Right. If it's not the original Hebrew, then it could be. No, we don't use. That's for sure. That's for sure. The Hebrew letters that we use today, that's what Kamara says, right? We use Ketav Ashuri. The, the Hebrew letters. That we use come from Ashur, <laughs> come from Ad Right. They used to have Ktavivri. We lost Ktavivri. So you can use Rashi script. That's not I wrong. mean, you can use any script. What do you mean? No, what we're trying to say is is it a, the only Doraita, the Havamina, that the only Doraita is Ktav Ashur. So what about Rashi script? Is Rashi script Ktav Ashur? I don't think so. Yeah, the whole joke is that Rashi couldn't read Rashi's script, right? Rashi never learned Rashi's script. It was the first guy who printed a Chumash wanted to show, they were very worried, they wanted to print Rashi on, in a Chumash because they were worried that people would think that this is Taira and this is Taira. So they wanted to distinguish between the two. So today we're crazy. We know, we know how fonts look. But in the olden days, the printing press, they weren't so font sensitive. So the moment they started printing Rashi in a different font, everyone recognized right away, well, this can't be Chumash because that's written in the classic Tavashuri font. That's why they did it. Today we could do margin, or fancy, schmancy. They have, you know, 20,000 fonts, right? <laughs> I remember growing up, so fine, just thinking about certain things, that like, people would get like, oh wow. Word came with like five fonts. If you wanted to get more, you'd like buy them, and you'd like get them. It's like, you would steal fonts. It's like a big deal to bring like your disc to school. Wow, I have like 40 fonts. <laughs> it's like, it's so funny what you say, a really big deal, that now it's like, okay, whatever. Well, today, how many fonts are in a standard word? Hundreds? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's like a whole chachma, which I don't really appreciate. Like, when teeth do I find? I don't really get that so much. But. They have, like, multiple fonts. There's a specific font. Right. The only one that matters for school is time. Henry, right. Henry actually, I, mean, I like using Arial. I actually don't like time. Oh, yeah? Those are smaller. You know they're smaller, right? In Arial? In Arial, yeah. How's your room when you bring it? You have, like, more room on the page. This is Arial. Yes. 12, 12 point. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why the Bari Lam would you copy and paste. The default is 11 point. Just, I don't know. 60 seconds. There's a for sure way to change that, but I don't do it. Okay. The fact that Orzura says that Ashuri and Yavani, I guess Greek writing and Hebrew writing, right? You know, you right? know, you know that Greek writing all came from the Byzantine letters. Yeah, right. So it's like. Savivri. Yeah. So. Savivri, yeah. The Ikar Yusodoba now, Pid Yusham. Where did you get this from? Yusham means. Pid Biarov, the Kasher Navi, the Kaman. The Avshi bin Yenu Mista F Mizas Vara Humra, the Lome Kilana Filade in O Yehudi, Kim Biktiva di Dahu, we Tamze, Tikarama, et Devarav. Today, this is what I wanted to show you here. La Hush, the Shitato. Said the Birhalacha. Do not think for one second. And the Ramah is saying that this is the Halacha. Just because the Ramah quotes Orzarua and says that every single language is a Durabanan, don't think that's what he really holds the Halacha. That's absurd. That goes against everything we've seen in various Ramahs and Shulchan Arach. Rather, says Birlacha, what is the Ramah worried about? He's worried that he wants to be Choshesh he says, I have another reason why you could be lenient. You see this? The Ramah is trying to say, I have two reasons why you could be lenient when it comes to writing on, having a non-Jew do something on Shabbos. I can either hold from the classic Shavut Shavut B'maka Mitzvah, or I can rely on one sheet of a Rishon who holds that writing in the vernacular is only the Rabbanan. So, he, oh, so, that's a good question. Why does Ramah feel 
that he needed to quote this Dat Yachi? That's a very good question. Why does he need to just go to classic case of... What, mu- what might have bothered Rama was the Gemara doesn't say Shvud the Shuv Malka Mitzvah, although maybe it does. The Gemara says, says, you can do this? Because of Mitzvah, you should verse Yisrael. So is that trying to say that it's a classic Shvud the Shuv Malka Mitzvah? trying to say this is a little bit different. So maybe the Rama is trying to, to say here, uh, there's even a ping that holds that it just is a classic Shvud the Shuv Mitzvah. I think, I think that's, what the, that's how the Bir Halacha wants to explain this Ramah and why he felt it necessary to bring an obscure opinion, which he doesn't even hold by. We don't see him do that anywhere, right? It's not like the other Simonim of Kote, the Ramah brings it down. Because if he would, he should have done it earlier. And it seems to again, so Mamash before Shem Mishnah. How does Zeru understand that Mishnah? You have to go through the Zeru and see how he understands it. Okay. Um, why does he do this? You see, come on, come. Kedei shalom lo hotzi mizet takala la kam in your name ani mochriach la archiv hadvarim bezel ve'er shakol poskim chokim ozeh. And he, the the mishmar says, listen. If you'll just see this from us and you take it out of context, people become so lackadaisical. Think about it. Who's, who writes in Hebrew? Five hundred years ago, no one wrote in Hebrew unless you were a Talmud Chacham and writing a sefer. And he says this gets out. This Ramah gets out and is understood in its own context. People are mamish going to be makeo in the Isur Doretta of, of Kote on Shabbos. And it appears that the Ramah holds that Lechat Chila, we pass around the Orz that writing in the vernacular is not the Ramah. He says, This is so dangerous. I must go to battle against it. Or I must explain it in context. I'm not going to battle, but explain its context. And that's why this Bir Halacha is so massive. Isn't that neat? He feels he has to really explain things properly because you could be misinterpreted and misconstrued. Right, that's just why it's a. So, I mean, it's not filler. It's a great. He goes through. <laughs> this is where he goes through all his things about Kote. This is really where it comes out. <coughs> when is Kote? When is Kote? When you finish a Sefer, so this is a we, issues that we've touched about before. This is where he really gets into the lambdas of Kotev. In the, so a lot of the issues that we've discussed over the past three weeks actually would be gleaned from this Bir Halacha as well, which is really, which is really neat. Um, so that's why it's so long. This is basically his, you know, his country on, 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 on Kotev. Okay, go to five. <coughs> We'll, uh, we'll end with this with this a, a really neat uh, tshuva that I think um, is fun. Al davar asher shalani hakatzin. There was some type of general, right? Some type of officer. Rabbi Yisrael Hanigsberg. Hanigsberg. Im yishma kol nimtzah heter. Could he produce some type of seal, you know, like a signature, stamp? Similar to what his handwriting would be. Here's a guy who is very popular in Israel. Here's a guy who's mamish in the government. A big guy in the in the government. I want to say Amsterdam. Some European government. He's a big official, and he's sitting there on Shabbos. He has to sign documents on Shabbos. Could he sit and write a letter to Rabbi Yisrael Hanigsberg? Could he sit in the mayor's office? Could he sit in Parliament and tell a non-Jew, "Okay, this has to be signed by me. Use my stamp." Is that religious permitted? Religious a religious Jew who was a mamish, a government official. So who did he ask this to? The no de Yehuda. Cool question. Very cool question. Here we go. He need divrei Rama, and of course, what's he going to do? He's going to quote a Rama, right? Our language, right in the vernacular, is Rabbanan, so maybe you could do it. He says the words of Ramah are shocking. Divrei Rambam, Divrei Tosvos, Masachet Gittin, Masachet Baba Kama, Vachenevi Shmuel, Abed Shmuel, and some of that. 
Everyone goes crazy over this Ramon. And they bring Tosfat, who holds Mamish, Tosfat holds Mamish black and white. Their language is, is the right sound. Okay. And he goes on to hold that it's a Mishnah before Rashad. And guess what he's going to conclude with the last paragraph? The Magin Avram, and go down to the last, that's a nice about Shuvah. I think you have the last line there at the bottom. Magin Avram and Simon Shin Zion, Sivkat and Zion, Lo Hitir Afilu Shvud Al Yidei Nochri Ella, the Makom Hefted Gadol. The Kevan. So he did not permit. You're not even allowed to do a shvut midrabanan by a non-Jew unless there's a great need, which is why maybe playing musical instruments at a wedding, even though it's a shvut, the shvut malcolm mitzvah might not be allowed. Because let's face it, the fact that your Shabbos lunch, a shabbat doesn't have a ten-piece orchestra, is that sort of gadol? I'm not sure. The Kivan should not do indeed on the Rova Poskim, who Malacha do right that, and for sure, because most will hold this right that, Ain Mahatir Afilu, the Makom Hesed Gado. Maybe if you're going to lose your job, right? Vlavachi in the Damos Ha Shavutim Zelaze, which is a Safti Rafa Magid, Ragvav, Chabas, or Hatet, Shahareba Kone by Berti Israel, he too Shavut, the Gabe Mila, Shehim Mitzvah, Ase, Hamura Mao. By the way, when it comes to doing a brismila, you're also allowed to violate certain derabanans. Vehi atzma doche shabbos. The reason why you do brismila, because brismila itself is doche shabbos. <laughs> brismila itself is not a derabanan, right? So perhaps doing the question about machshira brismila also could be permitted to do. Right? Things that you need to do. What about carrying the knife in a in a rishus rabbi or a carmelite? Right? What about sharpening the knife? Right? All these cases of what's called machshirim are they permitted to do for brismila? Machshiri Ochel Nefesh. Ochel Nefesh is permissible on, y- on Yantaf, right? What about Machshiri Ochel Nefesh? What about sharpening your knife to do Shechita? What about, right, preparing the food? Are those things also permitted? Okay, so not for now. Fi Atzma Docha Shabbos. Fi Lachil Otiru Shavut Vehvi. And even then, perhaps, the rabbis, did, they were not so happy that you're allowed to do a Durabanan, even for Bismillah. Vehvi Magin Avram, Mesim and Shizada. Lachain Kasha Limso Heter. Lachagbir Dabadavarza. I just can't find the Heter. Even for you to use a stamp that has your signature um, in legislature on um, on Shabbos, so it appears halacha lemaisa. That is how we paskin. We hold that even writing English is a doraita, and therefore we do have to be very careful when we write both in the vernacular and how much more so in Hebrew. You might want to argue what would be the makom hetter. You might want I mean, what, what's even the havmina to say that it's only Hebrew. The reason might be that the Mishkan they wrote in Hebrew. They wrote in Hebrew in the Mishkan, right? The bre- you know, cooking is cooking. What's the difference if I cook in uh, Toronto or I do bishul in the uh, Mishkan? What's the difference if I do hotza? When it comes to writing, maybe you could say that writing in Kitab Ashuri, writing in Hebrew, has a sense of significance to it. It might be the Havmina, we should be on Paskin that way. Um, it's a fascinating topic that has this Hashlachot, right? For other concepts in Halakha, for Israel, for other areas. So it's, it's, a fun, uh, it's a fun topic. Okay, we'll stop there for today.